Okay, all right. So welcome back to chapter one. Okay. So in this session, okay, I will go through with you the problem solving lah. Okay, for chapter one, unit conversion and also problem solving regarding with vector. Okay. Okay. So if you look at the previous notes, okay, I have given you with a uh, four example. Okay, involving unit conversion. So we will go through with the solution one by one lah. Okay, thirty millimeter square into meter square. Okay, so for this one question A. Okay, so usually we will end up with answer. Okay, this is a normal answer lah. Okay, either you get thirty times ten to the power of okay negative three meter square or you will have these two option lah okay negative six meter square okay these are two common mistake lah you will end up with either one solution lah okay okay now we will go through lah one by one okay which one is the correct one okay so thirty millimeter square into meter square okay so the common mistake over here will be okay first we look into the conversion lah okay so mm we want to convert into meter okay so we know the conversion one meter will be equivalent to one thousand okay so one thousand that means ten to the power of three millimeter right okay so that means meter convert into millimeter okay sorry times by thousand okay and millimeter convert into meter divide by thousand okay so divide by thousand times 10 to the power of negative 3 okay so this is a conversion for meter into millimeter okay but if you look at the question over here they have square here okay millimeter square and meter square okay so if the question has square over here you have to include square as well okay so that means mm square meter square so that means the multiplier also you must have square okay so square over here okay so that means if you use mathematical equation a square m okay powered by n for example so it will become a m n okay so a m n that means the value will become 10 to the power of negative 6 and then this one it will become 10 to the power of 6 over here okay so now we are converting millimeter to meter Okay, so 10 to the power of negative 3 square okay so which you will end up with okay 30 times 10 to the power of negative 6 okay or 3.0 oh times 10 to the power of negative 5 okay uh, so for the solution question C okay so this one we have 300 gram per centimeter cubic convert into kilogram per meter cubic okay so what you can do is at first okay rearrange lah. so that means it will be gram over centimeter cubic we are going to convert into kg over meter cubic okay so for this one okay so 300 okay gram into kg okay so first you do the conversion gram into kg so divide by thousand okay and then centimeter cubic to meter cubic okay you can do it like the previous one lah okay so conversion from centimeter to meter so one meter is equivalent to 100 okay so that means divide by 100 so we have a cubic over here power of 3 Okay, so this one also power of 3 lah. Okay, so which will end up with the final answer over here. So which will be equivalent to 3.0 times 10 to the power of 5 kilometer per meter cubic. Okay, so D, consider straightforward lah. Okay, 
you should be able to do with my equation A. Okay. So, which will end up with 2.4 times 10 to the power of negative 11 meter cubic. Okay. Uh, so, for question B, okay. So, this one they include two method. Okay. Up to you which one you want to follow. Okay. So, same like the previous one. Okay. So, this one we have kilometer per hour convert into meter per second. Okay. Conversion kilometer to meter first part over here and then hour to second over here. Okay. So, kilometer to meter. Okay. Times so multiply by 1000. Okay. Hour convert into second. Okay. So, one hour which will be equivalent to 3600 second. So, which will end up with 240 meter per second. Lah. Okay. So, this will be method 1. Okay. Method 2. Okay. So, kilometer to meter. So, what you do is then multiply by 1000. Lah. Okay. 1000 meter over 1 kilometer lah. Because 1000 meter will be equivalent to 1 kilometer. Okay. So, 1 hour to second. So, 1 hour over 3600 seconds. So, that means which will in the end cancel off each other lah. So, kilometer will cancel, cancel. So, you will end up with meter and hour and hour will cancel which will end up with second lah. So, basically both you will get the uh, final outcome which will be equivalent to 200 and 40 meter per second. Okay, so this one according to the convenience. Okay, which one do you prefer to use? Okay, so I think personally the first method will be easier, lah, straightforward. Okay, straight away you just convert kilometer to meter and then hover into second. So you'll end up with the final answer over here. Okay, so for this part over here, I will go through a little bit regarding the dimension okay, of physical quantities. So, this one you should be able to define dimension, okay, determine the dimension of a derived quantity and then verify the homogeneity okay, using the dimensional analysis. Okay. So, dimension can be treated as algebraic quantities okay, through the procedure called dimensional analysis. Okay, so the uses, okay, we can use it to determine the unit. Okay, second one, determine whether a physical equation is dimensionally correct or not, okay, by using the homogeneity lah, okay. So, later we will look into example, okay. So, if you are going to determine homogeneity, okay, so we will have two sides lah basically, okay. Left hand side, okay, of the equation and also right hand side of the equation, okay. So, if it balanced on both sides, left and right is balanced. So, that means we have a homogeneity lah. Okay. Uh, homogeneity maksudnya dia sama lah. Okay. Uh, kiri dengan kanan dia sama. Balance. Okay. So, and then to able to derive and construct okay, physical equation. Okay. So, dimension of dimensionless constant is 1. Okay. So, something without a dimension, lah, okay, which will be a constant, which is 1. Okay. So, wait, later as we do examples, we will look into this. Lah, okay. uh, so, for example, if you have a value of 2. Okay. So, 2. So, this, this is a value without dimension. Okay. So, the value will be equivalent to constant 1. Lah, okay. And dimension cannot be added or subtracted. Okay, so the validity of uh, any equation cannot be determined by the dimensional analysis. So the validity will depend on the equation itself, lah, whether you will end up with the correct answer or not. Okay. Okay, and then the validity of an equation can only be determined by experiment. Okay, whether you can verify or not. Lah. Okay, so we look into example 1.1. Okay, so this one they want it to determine dimension of the SI unit for the following quantities okay okay first we have velocity okay so this one we look back into the definition where velocity will be equivalent to displacement over time okay so that means s over t okay so as displacement we will measure in length and time we will measure in t okay so which will end up with dimension of l over 
So, L the unit length we will measure in meter and time we will measure in second. Okay. So, that means the final unit you will end up with meter per second. So, this one you have to look back into base quantity. Lah. Okay. Base quantity with the unit. Okay. And then for B, acceleration will be equivalent to velocity over time. Okay. So, previously we have determined velocity is equivalent to length over T. So, let's say if you are not sure, you just derive again. Lah. V will be equivalent to S over uh, T time. So, that means L over T. So, which will end up with L over T. Okay. And then divide by T. So, which will end up with L T uh, power by negative 2. Okay. So, that means this one you will end up with equation meter per second the unit over second okay so you will end up with meter per second square okay so for p momentum mass times velocity okay mass dimension will be m okay velocity length over time so which will end up with m l over t okay so mass we measure in kg okay and then length meter okay, over time per second. Okay. So basically, if you can have the unit, you can relate with the dimension. Lah. Okay. Or from the dimension, you can relate with the unit vice versa. Okay. So for this part, verify the homogeneity. Okay. We are going to determine either the equation is in homogeneous condition or not. Okay. So, for example, we have two examples over here. So, first we have expression 2s is equivalent to 2ut plus at square where s, u, a and t okay, to represent displacement, initial velocity, acceleration and time. Okay. okay, so let us look into a first. Okay, now we take left hand side. Okay, so left hand side we have 2s. Okay, so since 2 is a constant, so the value will become as 1 lah over here. Okay, so which will end up with L only. So 1 times L, you will end up with L only. Okay, so for the right hand side, okay, you have 2 UT. So 2 constant, so which will become as value of 1. Okay, U velocity length over time multiply with time, so you will end up with L. Okay. And right hand side you have a t square. Okay. A will be length over t square times t square, which will end up with L. Okay. So for this case, the dimension on left hand side and right hand side is equal. Lah. So for the left hand side, you have L over here. Right hand side also you end up with L and also L. Lah. Okay. So that means you have homogeneous. Okay, homogeneous. Or dimensionally correct equation okay for question B okay left hand side okay V square so which will end up with L square times over T square and for the right hand side okay U square which will end up with the same dimension okay and for the other one 2 G T okay so solving for 2 G T you end up with L over T Okay. So, you end up with L over T. So, for this one, you have a homogeneous or non-homogeneous? Okay. So, since it is not equal, okay, U square equal to V square, but it is not equivalent to 2GT. Okay. So, we have a not homogeneous, okay, or dimensionally incorrect equation lah. Okay, for scalar and vector, okay, so this one you should be able to define scalar and vector quantity, resolve vector, okay, uh, so this one we will straight away look into problem solving, lah, okay, so you can apply in the upcoming chapters later on, okay, and then the illustrate uh, the unit vector in coordinate, lah, okay, okay, uh, first part, okay, so now let's say if we have, uh, for example, a force acting on object okay let's say f1 and then let's say you have another force f 
2. Okay, it came from a certain point over here. Okay, so since F1 is moving toward right, okay, so the resultant will be F1, okay, F2 moving toward the left, then it will be minus, lah, okay, negative F2. Okay, so let's say if you have F1 is given as a value of 5 Newton, and let's say F2 <coughs> given as 3 Newton. So that means it will be equivalent to 5 Newton minus with 3 Newton, which will end up with 2 Newton. So resultant 2, that means the object will be moving toward your right. Okay. So if your F1 will be greater than F2, then you will have a negative magnitude and the object will be moving toward left. Okay. So if you have a force acting on a plane, uh, left and right, it will be easier lah, for you to solve. Okay. If a force acting at the angle, then we need to use resolving vector first. Lah, okay. So now let's say you have a force over here, F. Okay. So this force acting at a certain angle, let's say from the plane over here, let's say you have an angle, theta. Okay. So what you can do is that this force can be resolved into two components. Okay, so this one you can resolve it into okay, F X and also F Y over here. Okay, X and Y component. Okay, so in order to resolve, what you can do is that you can form a or draw a triangle. Okay, so if you draw a triangle, you will end up like this. Theta. Okay, F fx and fy okay so once you have the triangle this one you should be able to apply your trigonometry knowledge lah. okay so if you look back into mathematics we will have toa ka and so okay Okay, where Towa, that means tangent, which will be equivalent to opposite over adjacent. Ka, cosinus, adjacent over hypotenuse. And so, sine opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so this is your angle theta here. So, this will be opposite. Okay, and this will be adjacent. And this will be hypotenuse. Okay, opposite, bertentangan. Adjacent, bersebelahan, hypotenuse, hypotenuse lah. Bersama lagi sama saja kan. Okay. Okay. Now let's say, if we use function of cos lah. Okay. Cos theta will be equivalent to opposite. So that means Fy over, eh, sorry, cos will be adjacent. Okay. So, uh, okay, adjacent. So that means fx over f okay so if you rearrange fy will be equivalent to hey sorry come again uh, fx okay uh, fx so that means fx will be equivalent to f cos theta lah. okay and sine theta will be equivalent to opposite. So that means Fy over F. Okay, so if you rearrange Fy will be equivalent to F sine theta over here. Okay, ah, so this is how we end up with the equation in secondary school. Okay, I'm not sure whether you understand the basic principle or not. Okay, so if you memorize, okay, so in order to apply the angle here, okay, so this angle has to be located at the x-axis lah, okay. Otherwise, let's say if they have given an angle for let's say example over here on top, so you need to redraw another diagram or what you can do is that you can just simply determine the angle over here lah, okay. So to make it simplify lah, okay, so we shall be accent. So this is the basic principle in work. Okay, so let us look into example 1, okay. So whenever you have diagram like this, okay, first thing what you need to do is that you must have a reference point, okay. 
So the reference point over here will be the this one, the center of the rotation. Eh, sorry, the center of the axis. Okay. So we need to rearrange. Okay, rearrange. So that means F two is two words. Okay. We need to redraw again. So kalau kamu ada vector ni dia akan ada kepala ekor kan? So letak ekor dekat point tu. Okay. So redraw. So over here you will have F two. And then the angle here will be okay. Here zigzag right. So here forty five. So you end up with forty five. So lah. Okay. So redraw with the angle. Okay. So once you rearrange, okay. So you will end up with the diagram like this lah. Okay. F one twenty angle. Okay. So F one can be resolved into x and y component. Okay. F two. Angle forty five, which also can be resolved into x and y component. Okay, and then F three we resolve into x and y component. Okay, so once you completed the diagram, okay, now you go for the table, okay, to determine the total x and y component. Okay, so now let us look into the table. Okay, so F1 X component will be F1 cos 20, Y component will be F1 sin 20 lah. Okay, so X component acting toward right positive, Y component acting toward right also. Eh, sorry, Y component upward. Okay, so positive. Okay, for F2 X component will be positive. Okay, Y component you will have negative over here. Okay. So this one, you have a negative value, okay, because it is acting downward, okay. And then for F three, okay, negative because it is acting toward your left, okay. And then for Y component also will be negative, okay, acting downward, okay. So once you have determine all the X and Y component, you find the sum, okay. Ah, sum add up saja lah, okay. 9.40, 21.2 minus. Okay, this one minus because you have a negative component. Okay. So total you end up with negative four, and for y component you end up with negative 37.8. Okay. Now since all you have the x and summation of the x and y component, you need to draw on the axis first, lah. Okay. To get idea where the vector will be located, okay. So resultant, okay, you can apply the formula. I need just ganti saja lah. Cari dia may find the answer for resultant. Okay, to direction, it will be equivalent to tangent lah. Okay, y over x. Okay, so for the drawing, okay. So since x is negative, okay. So your x value is negative. So that means it will be located over here, lah. X value which will be negative four, and y is negative thirty-seven point eight. Okay. So which will end up with the resultant over here, and the angle you get eighty-four. Okay. So since eighty four, it is located at a certain quadrant. Okay, either you can use or give the direction by using clockwise direction. Okay, sorry. Or what you can do is that just state by above or below lah. Okay. So for the previous one, it is located below negative x axis. Okay. Example two, I let it leave it to you lah. Okay, to try. Okay, so for scalar and vector, okay, so this one not available. Okay, you can go through lah. Okay, what is the meaning of a scalar and vector quantity? Okay, so next chapter will be on kinematics of linear motion. Okay, alright, thank you. Have a nice day.